undergo maintenance, so it was pedestrian only for a couple of weeks. It would have been easiest to say, well, the bridge is out, let's just not go to hockey, but it was the middle of hockey season. So families on one side would drop their kids off as close to the bridge as possible, and the kids would haul their gear across by foot to another car waiting on the other side. It also happened to be minus 40 degrees out for those couple of weeks. This story was shared with us by a community member who we met in the upper skin region of BC where our project is centered. A new recreation center is being built in Hazleton, a small community in the upper skin region between Smithers and Terrace. This is the traditional territory of the Gitsan and Wet'suwet'en First Nations, and the population of the rec center we serve is approximately 70% Indigenous. The Upper Skeena region faces various challenges in transportation, education, health, and it lacks economic opportunities. These stem from both its rural location and historic and ongoing colonialism. But the region's communities are also resilient and have many strengths. They tell great stories and win hockey seasons without even having an arena to practice in. The old arena was decommissioned three years ago after its roof was deemed structurally unsafe. The new rec center will not only provide the community with the rink again, but it also aims to promote health and wellness through sports, recreation, and other programming. For our project, we were tasked with developing a strategy for monitoring how the rec center will impact health and wellness in the region. Our community partners are Dr. Peter Newberry and Sandra Harris, both of whom have been key leaders in making this rec center a reality. We have carried out this year's work by engaging with the communities during three trips to the region, and we've also built on the work of a previous SCARP team who laid the foundation for the monitoring strategy last year. There are two main reasons why monitoring is important. First, it will help with reporting back to the rec center's initial funders and support a case for additional funding to expand programming and facilities in the future. Beyond that, the second and biggest reason for developing the monitoring strategy is to build a platform for community members to take ownership over their own health and wellness. As humans, storytelling comes naturally to us. Stories are universal in how we understand the world and each other. Our first key recommendation, then, is to use storytelling to engage and involve the community in creating its own narrative as part of monitoring its health and wellness over time. We found storytelling to be a successful research and engagement tool during a story night event, and um, we hope co-hosted in January, um, on our trip to Hazleton, where we ask community members about what sport, recreation, and well-being means to them. We listen for themes like participation, resilience, and barriers. These themes could then be matched to both qualitative and quantitative indicators. We recommend holding more story gathering events so that the resulting themes and their corresponding indicators can be compared over time. Our second recommendation is to build on existing community processes and capacity. During our trips to Hazleton, we made key connections with local organizations and people. This was important for a few reasons. First, we wanted to meet the community where they were, both literally and figuratively, and work with them to build a strategy suited to local culture and capacity. Second, this will help increase the strategy's efficiency by incorporating monitoring into existing data gathering processes. Two opportunities we explored are the Gitsang Government Commission Census and weekly health measurements taken by the community paramedic. Our third recommendation is to measure indicators incrementally. We drew on last year's SCARPS team's list of 100 health and wellness indicators to develop three phases for the monitoring strategy, quick wins, thunder friendly, and community focused. The first phase, Quick Wins, contains indicators that we've identified um, as the quickest and most feasible to implement. Some example indicators for the Quick Wins phase include attendance rates for rec center programs, the percentage of current smokers in the population, and the proportion of signage in the rec center that's in Gitsanamax, the Gitsan language. As you can see from the diversity of these indicators, we tried to balance biophysical measures of health with indicators of culture and community. Starting with these will build momentum and baseline data, which in turn will attract additional funding for more thorough data gathering during later phases. So to recap, these are the, ooh, uh -oh. There we go. So to recap, these are the key recommendations that we are making for the Rec Center's health and wellness monitoring strategy. 
Use storytelling to engage and involve the community. Build on existing community processes and capacity. And measure indicators incrementally, starting with the quick win space. With the rec center slated to open by the end of this year, we hope this monitoring strategy will play a supporting role in the next chapter of the Opera Scene's story. To end, I'd like to share a quote from another community member. The old arena was always a gathering place for people. It would be such a great feeling to have everyone back together at the new rec center, cheering on the same teams and supporting all generations. That sense of family will be huge. Thank you. <laughs>